This is not going to be a normal vlog. In fact, if you are watching this on Facebook right now, the first thing I want you to do is stop. Go to YouTube and watch this video in YouTube. I will put the link right here. I'll also put it in the description. It's gonna take two seconds and it's gonna be so much better for so many reasons. First of all, the quality of these videos on Facebook sucks. I don't know what they're doing to videos that get uploaded through Facebook, but they're super grainy. This is an amazing camera I'm using and I really want you to see these videos the way I intended you to see them. Super crisp and super clear. The other reason is so you can like the videos and so you can hit the subscribe button. I know you hear people say this all the time. I've said it a couple times in the past and I wanna take 30 seconds to explain why it's important for you to subscribe to my channel and watch these videos. Your view really matters to me because when you watch the video, the views counter goes up on my video and when other people are searching videos in YouTube and they see how many views a video has, if it has 10 or 15 views, nobody's gonna watch it. But if it has 10,000 views, they're gonna say, oh, that must be interesting and I'm gonna watch it. A lot of the content on YouTube is complete garbage, but the reason people watch it is because it's got a catchy thumbnail or it's got a lot of views. Pick your poison. So your view encourages other viewers to watch my channel and that is going to help it grow. It's also really encouraging to me. It takes a lot of time to make these vlogs and to see people watching them is really encouraging. So I appreciate it. And of course, when you watch, that's how I get paid. <laughs> you know those annoying ads that pop up? The ones that you can skip after five seconds, the movie previews, the annoying commercials, all that stuff. When you watch that, I get paid when you watch it to a certain point. So, hey, you know, don't be afraid to watch those for like, and finally the most important thing is pressing that ever important subscribe button. Don't be scared. You don't have to pay for anything. You're not gonna get a bunch of emails. I'm not gonna sell your information. Well, I probably won't sell your, I'm gonna sell your information. No, I'm not, not really. All that happens when you subscribe is it will give you notifications whenever I post a new video. Usually once a week, all it's gonna do, send you an email and say, hey, Shots of Jameson has a new video posted. Go and watch it. That's it. So if you went to YouTube and you're watching the video in YouTube right now, like I suggested that you do, you should see that little red and white subscribe button right down there. And you should take a second to click on it right now. I'll wait. Ah. Woo. All right, now that I've met my quota for groveling for the day, I'm gonna blow your mind. That's right, I'm talking about this, Tesla Model 3. Okay, unless you already know about this or you've done the research yourself, you may actually not believe what I'm about to tell you. And I don't blame you, because I didn't believe it at first either. This is the brand new Tesla Model 3. Oh my God, look at it. Look at it! Whoa, sorry, got a little excited there. There's a ton of reasons this car is going to change the way we think about cars in general. The how and the why of that is the part you might have trouble believing because most of the things this car can do haven't really been done by a car before, ever. First off, the Model 3 is fast, like really fast. Allow me to serve you a delicious meal of perspective. This is a Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. It can accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in just over three seconds. It also has a base price of about $330,000. <coughs> the Tesla Model 3 can accelerate from zero to 60 in two and a half seconds. Isn't that half a second faster than the Ferrari? Yeah, it is. Oh, and the base price of the Model 3? 
$35,000. Yeah, I'm serious. Sure, you'll have to cough up a little bit more for the performance model of the Model 3, but the base model of the Model 3 will still go from 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds. To put that in perspective, that will put you in an acceleration category along with the Porsche Cayman, the Aston Martin DB7 Vantage, or a brand new BMW 5 Series, all which are way more expensive than a Model 3. Have I lost it yet? See, you, you don't believe me, do you? you do, yeah. <laughs> so how is the Model 3 so fast and so inexpensive? This is really a two-part answer, so you're gonna have to stick with me on this one if you know what I mean. The first part of that answer is that the Tesla Model 3, along with all Tesla vehicles, are 100% electric. Yes, I said electric. That's why it's so fast. See, old school internal combustion engines take a while to spool up their RPMs and then you only get your maximum power and torque for a short period of time at the top end of the power band and then you shift gears and you do it all over again and by that time the Model 3 is way down the road ahead of you and you don't even know what happened. <sighs> <sighs> However, the electric engine does not suffer from this disadvantage because electric motors produce 100% of their power and torque at zero RPMs. This creates insane acceleration, the type you feel on a roller coaster. Again, yes, I'm serious. Okay, so that's why it's fast, but how is it possibly so cheap? It's so inexpensive because Tesla makes their own batteries and they make a ton of batteries. So what Tesla is calling their Gigafactory has the biggest footprint of any building anywhere in the world and it actually has the capacity to produce just as many lithium batteries as all other lithium battery producers in the world combined. And now, enter the term economies of scale. If you don't know what that means, you're gonna have to look it up because I don't have the time. The battery is one of the most expensive parts of the car and this is how they're able to lower the cost of the battery and in turn, lower the price of the car. But Jameson, there's already electric cars on the road. What's the big deal? Yeah. All right, I'll play your silly little game. Let's take a look at a couple of the most popular electric cars on the road today. I assume that you have either heard of or seen the Nissan Leaf. If you haven't, what are you living under a rock or something? Energy, energy, energy. The Leaf has a base price of $29,000, which isn't bad. It takes 10 and a half seconds to go from zero to 60. 10 and a half seconds. Let me compare that to some. Can I even think of something that slow? That's like driving a city bus. You know the kind that carry like 80 people? <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, the maximum range of a Nissan Leaf is only about 100 miles. The other common electric car that you may have seen on the road, other than Tesla's, is the BMW i3. The BMW i3 has a starting price of $42,000, which is pretty pricey for a shoebox on wheels. I mean, come on, that's, that's what it is. The i3 has a zero to 60 time of a little over seven seconds, and the range, maximum 100 miles. Seems to be the standard across popular electric cars on the road today, of which there are not many. Name an electric car other than the Nissan Leaf or the BMW i3 right now. Go! See? You couldn't even do it! And I'm not talking about those Chevy Volts. Those aren't 100% electric. Those have this stupid little gas engine. No, that doesn't count. So what are we saying? We're saying that essentially, other Tesla vehicles aside, these two cars are the best electric cars on the market. This is the best people have been able to come up with. They're both ugly, they're both slow, they're both overpriced, and I'm pretty sure a monkey could throw its own feces farther than either one of these two could travel on a single charge. I'm good. Tesla, the Model 3 in particular, has set a new standard for electric cars. The base model of the Model 3 has over 200 miles of electric range, upgradable to over 300 miles of electric range. That's the same as a gas car right now. And thanks to Tesla's network of superchargers all over the United States, you can go pretty much anywhere you can in a gas car, but for free. No other electric car manufacturer has that type of infrastructure or any type of that infrastructure. So at this point, the Model 3 should be a pretty clear front runner, right? I mean, unless you're on crack or 
heroin or you stopped watching this video a long time ago, which is entirely possible. It's fast, affordable, efficient, stylish. I mean, if that doesn't make it highly desirable, then I don't know what would. I mean, maybe if it like drove itself or something. Oh wait, uh, it does drive itself. The Tesla Model 3, Model S, and Model X will officially be the first fully autonomous vehicles on the road. Roughly two weeks ago, they announced new hardware on all of their vehicles that's currently in production right now that will enable all of their vehicles to be fully autonomous, AKA self-driving. That is so cool. Okay, I know that seems unrealistic. Let's just take baby steps here for just a second. So right now, Tesla has tens of thousands of production cars on the road that have features like Summon and Autopilot, which essentially allow the car to drive itself under certain circumstances. Summon parks your car for you or brings it back to you without you even being in the car. It'll even open or close your garage door automatically without you being in the car. And Autopilot is exactly what it sounds like. It will drive your car for you while you're on the highway. It will adjust your speed, it will adjust your distance between you and the car in front, it'll even change lanes for you automatically when the blinker's on, if it's safe to do so. It'll actually exit the freeway for you as well. And that's real. That's happening right now. In fact, you've probably driven on the highway next to a Tesla using autopilot and you didn't even know it. Maybe you were too busy texting or checking Facebook while driving instead of paying attention to the road. Would you put your freaking phone down while you're driving? Whoa, off topic. I'm not gonna get into all the nitty gritty details about how Tesla is going to make their cars drive themselves. <laughs> That's mostly because I don't know. <laughs> but what I will say is that every vehicle that Tesla has produced for the past two weeks roughly since they made the autonomous driving announcement has been equipped with the brand new hardware that will enable this feature. Just to be totally clear here, we're talking about jumping in your car in your garage in say Los Angeles, driving all the way to New York your car dropping you off in Times Square and then going and finding a parking spot on its own without ever touching a single driving control. Again, yes, I'm serious. Keep in mind, the Model S and Model X already on the road have a forward-facing camera, forward-facing radar, and a few sonar sensors around the car that help the car drive itself without you getting involved. The new hardware consists of no less than eight cameras all the way around the car, 12 ultrasonic sensors, a GPU that's 40 times faster than the one the existing cars are currently using, and an upgraded forward-facing radar. So it is way, way better than what is on the road right now. Not that what's on the road right now is terrible at all. Shortly following Tesla's announcement, a couple of weeks ago, they released a video where they show one of their vehicles being driven autonomously from a person's garage all the way to their work. The car drops them off in front of their office, the guy gets out of the car, walks into the office, and the car drives around the parking lot and looks for a parking spot. Now, I don't know about you, but I work with a couple people that would kill for that feature. Anyway, it's a really amazing video. I was really enlightened by it, and I would definitely recommend you go check it out. I will put the link right here and down below in the description so you guys can check it out. Okay guys, I'm obviously really excited for this car, and I think you should be too. I don't understand, with this knowledge and the type of change and evolution we're gonna see in the next year with electric vehicles, why anybody would buy a gas car between now and about a year from now. All kinds of new electric cars are gonna come out. I'm focusing on this one because I definitely reserved one for myself. The bad news is that four or 500,000 other people have already reserved Model 3s. So probably won't get delivered until late Q4 2017. So that's kind of like a year from now, which I'm kind of bummed about. But it's cool. Good things come to those who wait. Okay, last thing I want to do really quick before wrapping up this video. If you follow me on Facebook, you saw that I made a post late last week about the fact that I was going to do this video and I asked people to submit questions. First question I got was someone asking me when I'm going to start scheduling ride-alongs. And I'm going to be so excited to show this thing off that if I know you personally, you can just come by and ask me, text me, call me, uh, whatever. But if I don't know you, just shoot me a message on Facebook and I probably won't answer because I don't know you. The other one isn't really a question. Uh, it was more of a comment about how, just be careful because these aren't uh, perfected yet. You're totally right, they're not perfect. But if you look at uh, the number of deaths per year um, for people driving in cars, it's, 
it's very high and it's very sad. I think it's roughly one person for every million miles driven in a car. Tesla has had cars with the autopilot feature on the road for actually a couple years now. And over that time, the statistic of number of deaths per million miles uh, for autopilot cars driven is 0.2. So that's 0.2 people die for every 1 million miles driven on autopilot and one person dies for every million miles driven manually. So just a little piece of information to chew on. Um, I definitely think that the road would be a safer place if there were more autonomous vehicles, but um, that's just my opinion. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. Click like, it really helps me out. I hope you enjoyed the video. I always appreciate your feedback, so don't be afraid to share. Peace! Thank you.